everyone in podcast listening land. I'm Karen Devaney. And I'm Ann Barner. And, and we're, we're sisters. sisters. Welcome to Sugarcoated Murder, where we'll discuss and probably inappropriately laugh about and comment on yep, one of our favorite subjects, murder. murder. Oh, and we love to bake. And why not combine our two favorite subjects? Baking and, and killers. Karen Devaney. What you doing in your kitchen? I'm going to cook up a little something, something. What you going to cook today? I'm making a Swiss cake roll. Oh. Because everybody loves a little Debbie. I do love a little Debbie. Mm-hmm. I don't even mind a tasty cake or an intimate, any kind of a, any kind of a chocolate wrapped around some white cream. I'm good with it. Yeah. I'm good I enjoy with it. A, a little Debbie, um, but I do also care for... A hostess. A hostess. Ho ho. A ho ho. A, di- a, king, a ding a dong. King, a king dong. Oh, wait. What's a ding dong? I think that's something that's not. <laughs> oh, wait. Not. A what is hostess. it? Hostess. It's a ding dong. It's a king dong. King dong. That sounds even ruder. Well, I think that's what it is. A king dong? Pretty sure. Are you talking about the cupcake with yeah. the cream in the middle? Yeah, yeah. It looks like a hockey puck. I'm, yeah. Okay. Well,. We'll have to do some research. But anyway, I'm excited that you're doing this because I love me some of whatever it is you're cooking. Yeah, and I've never done any kind of a roll, like a roll. Yeah, thing that's a challenge. I'm excited to see jelly you. Pan I've situation. never done that. I've never conquered the roll yeah. because I am intimidated by the roll, yeah. but not so intimidated that I don't sport a few of my own rolls. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. yeah. I work with my rolls, but I've not baked a roll. <laughs> I'm, yeah, rolled exactly. It. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Um, so that's awesome. Well, before we get started, I, I wanted to tell you about some animal news. There's animal news? There's animals in the news. Oh. Yes. And the first one I want to tell you about is um, a Galapagos turtle named Diego. Oh, Diego. And he has finally gotten to retire mm. after he has helped bring the population of Galapagos turtles from 15 to 2,000. Woo! And he has fathered 800 offspring all by himself. God bless him. And you go, Diego. He's over 100 years old. You go, my man. And now he's going to, he's been part of this breeding program somewhere. And now they're taking him back to where he originally came from in the Galapagos. And he gets to retire there amongst his people. Oh, way to go, Diego. I know. Ooh, the ooh, funny ooh, thing ooh. is, is that the reason that he is the most well-known, I guess, or most talked about Galapagos turtle is because he really enjoys mating. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> and he's never missed a call for the mating. Yeah, no, I'm and sure. It's like, you need me? I'm en- there for you, girl. He tends to enjoy it so much that he makes grunting sounds <laughs> oh, when he geez. does it. <laughs> oh, my. So, he is really into his job. Well, Diego, you yes. sly little devil. I know. So congratulations to Way Diego. Way to go, Diego. I'm so proud and Super happy. Proud. Way to yes. go. So then we're going to talk about the, just real quick, the Australia fires, which have been just so devastating. <sighs> I and can't even imagine. We've watched it on the news and we've seen the, just, the, it's just been horrible. It has been. So, but there's this little Australian shepherd mix mm-hmm. dog. She's adorable and her name is Patsy. Patsy. Yes, and she has been um, credited with herding more than 220 sheep herd, to safety. Herd. Not them. hurting. She did not herd. hurt anybody. She herded. Herded, herded, herded them. Herded them. So, more than 220 sheep she has saved from the wildfires. Wow. Isn't that amazing? Patsy, you rock. Yeah, I was just really, I was really happy to, I love animals, and I love to read when they actually get um when they get credited with just amazingly dynamic things whether they're saving lives or making lives yes either way all animal lives matter i agree and i love yeah. animals and i think one day we'll be able to do this podcast from our animal farm that we're gonna have so some people think an animal farm is kind of like a place where Maybe the not mentally ill, but not completely sane people go to live out their lives. <laughs> exactly. So, that's where that we'll be. Will, that's exactly what we will be. And we'll have animals on our and animal farm. Coincidentally, there'll be actual animals there. Yes. All of the dogs that don't get adopted. Oh, 
the yes. ones that have lived their lives in shelters, the so ones I've that just need watching, a, a loving been... place for the rest of the end days of oh their life. Gosh. That's us. We're yes. taking them all. And we're going to just be full-time animal snugglers. And not smugglers. Not, not smugglers. smugglers. Not snuggle. This snugglers. This is a podcast about enunciation. <laughs> yes, and now we will start the ASMR part of the podcast. <laughs> enunciation. This is how you enunciate. Enunciation. Heard. 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 Okay, I can't do that. Okay. So anyway, yay for animals. And yay. speaking of animals and speaking of dogs, well, first of all, I will say that I've already had a tug of war battle with Trout this morning, and he won several times. And then I will tell you that I know you watch that show, um, Top Dog, America's Love Top Dog. That America's Top Dog is amazing. Did you see it this week where that yes. little teeny minion dog won? He is the cutest flipping Super dog. Super cute. And what he face. won. He was like half the size of all of the competitors. They're all like professionally canine police dogs that are like German shepherds and all those kind of breeds and this little teeny thing who amazing. when he went to do the attack on the, uh, the attack part, <laughs> he could only reach the guy's crotch. But he, he did it. Listen, he went for where he knew it would bring the guy That's down. That's right. And I thought it was so cute because then his mama called him and he went two steps and then turned around and went right, right back at the yeah, guy's he crotch. He was like, I'm not like, done. Well, just make sure. I'm going to make sure you know. So he won. I was so, we were just pulling for him because he's definitely the underdog. Yes. And he was amazing. So hats off to him. I know because some of those, those, <laughs> those police dogs, mm. they just did not like that water. No. Well, I don't think shepherds are swimmers. No. I was shocked that Minion was a swimmer because he definitely looks like a sinker. He does, but he didn't. He did it. He he really he was. Went he it. went for it. I just thought it was the sweetest thing. Yeah, this is so, really cute. Yeah, hats off. Has with his hand oh, oh my God. And Amazing. she was just in tears when she won. And they said, what are you going to do with the money? And she said, I'm going to put it back into my kennel. Yeah. And I just thought, oh, she just, she's a, she's a, she's a one of us. She loves yes. animals and she just, oh, yes, love I loved her. it. Love, yes. love, love. So, anyway. That's on A&E if you want to check it out. Yes, America's so Top Dog. That's our animal news. Animals in the news. <laughs> animals in the news. Speaking of animals. Yes. Do you have a murder? Yes, I do. Is there an animal in your murder? No, there's not. But there is an animal next to me trying to get in on my murder podcast. <laughs> Hello. Welcome, Trout. Hello, Welcome Trout. to the podcast. Hello. <laughs> Do you have anything to say today? Mm. No? Let me get you. Or you and I are going to come to. Oh, God. Now he's crying. Never mind. Okay. So, on to murder. This is about a lady named Lynn Jack and Hamer. Jack and Hamer. Yes, I think it's Hamer. I don't think it's ha I don't. It might be Hammer, but it's not Hammer. Not. Not Hammer. <laughs> it's not. Jack and Hammer. So I'm gonna say Jack, Jack and Hammer or Jack and Hamer, but from this point on, I'll probably just say Lynn because you know, words with a lot of letters get to me. I understand. So they're a big challenge. All right. So Lynn, she was the mother of two. She's from Ashland, Ohio. Okay. And she's got this on and off boyfriend named Nathan Summerfield. Okay. Um, one of her two children was fathered by Nathan, and he's a little three-year-old boy. And then she also has a 13-year-old daughter from a previous relationship, and that daughter's got some special needs. So... The family decides to go down to Frisco, North Carolina, which is in the Outer Banks, which is a beloved place of ours. Indeed it is. Yes. And um, they're going to go on a 4th of July vacay. All right. Pack up the kids, go on down, have yourself some beach time. All right. Well, July 9th, back in Ohio, Lynn's stepfather gets home and he finds 13-year-old, the 13-year-old daughter with special needs at, at his house alone. Oh. And she had been dropped off by Nathan and left there. Oh. And she said Nathan had taken the little boy with him. There was no mention of Lynn. Oh. So Nate shows up at his parents' house a little while later, drops off his son with his parents. As he's leaving, he doesn't really have much to say, but as he's leaving, he tells his brother... He had strangled Lynn and hidden her body. And then he takes off in his car. Hmm. 
So the brother calls 911 to report this to the police. I'm so glad he did that because some brothers, they might sit on that for a little bit. So now the search is on in Ohio for, to, to figure out what Summerfield is talking about and to find him, and a search also begins for Lynn. So the police first have to try to figure out if Lynn is in the Outer Banks, if she's in Ohio, or if she's somewhere in between Ohio and the Outer Banks. Right. So they try to interview the children, but both children just continuously keep crying for their mom. And they don't they don't give any indication of what happened or or where anything happened or how Lynn became missing. So um, on July twelfth. A report comes out that Lynn had been hesitant about going to North Carolina with Nate. One of her friends reports that um, Lynn was feeling a little apprehensive. So he said, or she told reporters, he already had a conviction of domestic violence towards Lynn and had um, been on, he was on probation. Mm hmm so, um, you know, they had this tumultuous relationship, and Lynn told one of her friends that at first she had told Nate she didn't want to go down to the Outer Banks on vacation, and he got very, very upset, uh -huh. and finally she just gave in and agreed to go. So, on July 13th, so now everybody's in Ohio, it has, Lynn's family from Ohio goes down to the Outer Banks to try to figure out if Lynn is there. July 13th, Dare County authorities suspend the search for her due to inclement weather. On July 14th, um, a construction worker finds the body of a female, and she was found about 30 minutes away from where they had vacationed in the Outer Banks. Oh, no. On Hatteras. So now we've got to figure out, is this Lynn? So on July 17th, there's confirmation that the body found was, in fact, Lynn Jackenheimer. Hmm. So, damn, damn it, Lynn. What happened to you, girl? Exactly. Well, I can tell you she had been stabbed and strangled. Oh, no. So, they're still searching for Summerfield, and an, an official arrest warrant has been issued by now. July 19th. Okay. Okay. Nate is spotted in Columbus, Ohio, but he still evades police. Oh, and by now, the Ashland, Ohio police force is working over overtime. They're not nobody is sleeping. It's all hands. They're out trying to find this guy. Right. And um, they they just give it all of their effort. But it wasn't until early August that Nate's car is found in Michigan. And Finally, on August 15th, he is caught and arrested at a small hotel in Ashland. But the manager had no idea who he was. Like, she didn't realize that's who that was. Right. So, um, he was extradited back to North Carolina. And he is then indicted on first-degree murder charges. And a trial is set for February 2015. Okay. Meanwhile, Len's mother, Lori is embattled for custody over those children. Mm. Nate's parents filed custody for that little boy, and she said, I don't want to separate them, and if his father is the one that killed my daughter, that family does not deserve to have this little boy, and right. he needs to be with his sister, and they cry for their mother every night. Right. And I need to be here because I know how my daughter, my daughter raised her children, and I, I'm the one that will raise them just like she did. Right. I never, ever found another indication of whether or not she lost or won that court case. Oh. So that's, I hope she did, but Me I don't know. Me too. All right. So like I said, the trial is set for February 2014, 2015, but in 2014 in December, Nate decides to plead guilty to second degree murder and two counts of kidnapping. This was a plea deal, but the court only accepts his plea deal, his plea after confirming with Lynn's family that they are accept, accepting of the plea. So they talked about it and they said that um, the time, you know, the two years that they had spent without Lynn had just been so 
devastating for them and that those children continue to be devastated and they just couldn't go through a trial. They just couldn't do it. It was too heartbreaking and they didn't want, um, I think they were really protective of Lynn and not wanting to put the gruesome details out there. Right. That makes sense. And for the kids to know, and you know, they're just being very protective. They kind of close ranks around the kids. Right. I, I thought it was a, Pretty good decision. So, um, Nate confesses to stabbing and strangling Lynn, but he says he doesn't remember the night that it happened because he was on Ambien. Trout. Oh, no. You need an Ambien. Oh, no. Stop. You got to stop it, buddy. He's good. Okay. That was not Trout. That was his rope. I didn't throw him. Okay. (laughs) So, um, on the... On the sentencing day, Lynn's family filed into the courtroom, all of them, and um, the the daughter that by now is 15, the special needs daughter, gives an impact statement. Okay. And she's so brave. She got up there and, and gave a victim impact statement, which I think is huge. Right. Um, and so um, Nate ended up being sentenced to 30 to 39 years in prison. And while it isn't life Which to in me prison, isn't long it's a enough, drop but in I the get bucket. it. They didn't want to do a trial. They, they didn't. To and they the said, kids. listen, it. justice was served the best way that it could. The problem is there is no justice that could equate the loss of Lynn no. and what happened to her. And nobody will ever know because the asshole decided to, you know, pretend like he doesn't remember. Right. I took Ambien and I don't remember, but I, I certainly had enough coordination and mind control that I could stab and strangle her and then hide her body. Right. I just don't remember it. That's another one of these. If I don't remember it, it doesn't make it true. Right. So what a jackass. So anyway, um, he didn't get, you know, what we would consider the full sentence, but I will tell you that he absolutely, hopefully will, I don't know, meet up with some really big, mean people in prison. That'd be great. One could only hope. I mean, he's not sitting on death row, so he's not segregated. Right. So, um, you know, I'm hoping that that's what happens. But, yeah, so it happened in the Outer Banks, which makes me very sad that anything bad happens in the Outer Banks. (laughs) No, we don't want anything bad to happen there. Yeah, so. Oh, I got to sneeze. It's coming. Oh, no, don't don't poop. (laughs) Because one of our listeners, oh, who's a big from, fan, is from Ohio. Uh, no, it's from the Outer Bay. Yes, and <laughs> good guess, Shoga. You are such a sleuth. Oh, my gosh, look at you go. I know. You know, I got a college degree. I know you do. You got that college degree. You're educated. You know, I am. So anyway, she had um, she had written to me and said, "Hey, this might be a murder that you might want to." Right. You know, find interesting and, and might want to do it on the podcast. And so I love that. I love that people say, hey, look at this murder. It's something yeah. that you might find interesting. And if anybody else wants to do that, you Absolutely. can email us at murder.sugarcoated at gmail.com. That's right. Or join our face group. group face it's group. not a face group. It's a Facebook group. It is. Fan page. And we're also now on Instagram. Oh, my gosh. You know what that means. We have to learn what to do with Instagram. I know. I don't know what to do. I just, so I don't know. Far, Karen Devaney has figured out the Instagram a little bit. I just got I, as far as getting the app on my phone. I haven't <laughs> opened it. I don't know what to do Yes, yeah, so I want to be like, yeah, we're on the gram. But I, I actually said to my son, so uh looks like we're now on the Insta. And he was like, they're on the what? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what you call the Instapot, an Insta. Oh, gosh. Well. <laughs> See, and I was like, oh, you know, look how hip and cool and jiggy I am. Turns out I'm jiggly, but not jiggy. And so um, now now I can say we're on the gram. We're yeah, on the IG. Leave it, leave it to our kids to make to sure our, yeah, we're, we're proven wrong at, on every turn. So while we're talking about fans, 
I do want to give a shout out to a really big mega fan who shall remain nameless. Oh, we have a mega fan. We got a mega fan. Woo! And that mega fan sent us each coffee mugs. Yes. With our sugar coated murder logo on the coffee mugs, and we're drinking out of them right now. Yes. And they're so flipping adorable. Yes. And we're going to put pictures of them up because we want everybody to see how much we're loved we're by loved somebody. By a, a he or a she, a <laughs> or they. A shim. A shim. I was going to say a shit. <laughs> 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 or it could be a, I don't know. Maybe they're a shit. I don't know how, what their personality is. Yeah, we're not going to have a mega fan. Oh, oh my God, we're not. You mega fan, fan. whoever who, you be, please, uh, you're, you're not a shit. <laughs> <laughs> you're the shizzle you're the shizzle so anyway we are dr drinking out of those mugs which I'm, I'm quite enjoying so thanks fans we we really love you guys we love that y'all are listening and that you're sticking with us and that um you haven't called our mama yet we really appreciate that yeah we really appreciate that all right sugar tell me where you are on your recipe all right so tell first of all tell me how you made that swiss roll the right. roll, the roll. I'm going to tell you. Okay, tell me. Because um, I was very intimidated by it. You do like a flour, cocoa, um, baking powder, salt mixture. And then here's what drives me crazy about some recipes. Then it says to put in a half a teaspoon of instant coffee. Well, does that mean brewed instant coffee, or is that the instant coffee? That's the granules? powder. It's the powder. Right. So then you put that in. And I know why you put it in, because chocolate I mean, coffee makes the flavor of chocolate come out more. It elevates it. elevates the flavor <laughs> of the chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sounds like you're either constipated or having a heart attack. I'm Julia Charles. Um, I thought you were, um, who's the lady on Downton Abbey that we love? Oh, right, right. Yeah. The grandmother lady. Yeah, she was yes. a yaya. Yes, she yes. was. Yes, <laughs> whatever her name. That's who you sounded like. Oh, pardon. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. So, back to the recipe. I need specifics. When I look at a recipe, I need specifics. So, I did what I thought was right. Also, um, you. it also has eggs and sugar. But it's just the egg yolks that you use for the cake oh, mix. Wow. So you have to separate That's your eggs. Different. But then you use the egg whites. You whip those up until you get soft peaks, which always intimidates me. Whip it. Whip, whip it good. So I na, 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 na. Ooh, oh, 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 then you fold the whites into the cake mixture, mm -hmm. and it says to be careful not to deflate them. Well, how are you going to fold the dense mixture and the egg whites and not have them deflate? You have to fold gently. I fold it gently. Okay. <laughs> and I made myself a sponge. <laughs> so you put now it you're from Ireland. <laughs> forever. You've gone from I'm international. Oh sister. yes, you are. You really are inter freaking national. So um, then I. Put that mixture on, uh, it's calls, you're supposed to put it on a half sheet pan. I asked um, Alexa. Oh, she's going to come on now. now. Alexa, go back to sleep. I asked her what size it was. She told me. I asked her again because I forgot. <laughs> and then I asked her a third time and she said, would you like me to repeat that? Oh my yeah, gosh. She got she's really being sassy. A little bitchy. She got really sassy. She's so. got attitude. She and Trout must be related. <laughs> yeah. So I just picked the one that I had that was the medium size and used it. But I and it, then it says that you're supposed to grease your pan. Yes. And with uh, it's a God. it with parchment. Okay. So you do grease you, the parchment. Or the, it, it's oh. a parchment greased pan. Okay. So I didn't know. Do I put the parchment on the bottom or on the top? I would have done both. I did. <laughs> That is what I did. And I'm glad that I did because what I found was because I did it on the bottom when I went to roll the cake when it came out, it made it really easy because it didn't, it doesn't stick. When you unfold it, it, oh, it won't stick. Okay. Um, and I actually did that before we started because rolling of parchment paper is very loud and crinkly. Yes, I appreciate that. Um, and I didn't want to do it on the podcast because I figured we'd lose some listeners. Or me. 
Well, <laughs> I could just walk right out because of that damn parchment paper. Could be. So once you get that all situated and get it rolled, it has to cool completely before you fill it. In the rolled position? In the rolled position. Cool. Yes. So I've done that, and um, then I um, whipped up the filling, and the filling is marshmallow cream. I used the Jet Puff because um, it was the right size for me. Hmm. And um, size matters. Size does matter in this recipe. Well, in the kitchen, it really it does. does. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so um, I made that filling. I'm getting ready to put the filling. I'm getting ready to unroll the roll, and then I'm going to put the filling in the roll. And now I've made um, a chocolate ganache to pour over the roll so that it will be shiny. I like a shiny. So the recipe just calls for melted chocolate poured over top. I but don't get it. When I've used just melted chocolate in the past, I find that it takes Stop. it a while to, um, what's the word, firm up. So it's a little runny and sticky to and the tacky. 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 Yeah, I don't feel like it ever really firms up right. unless maybe you freeze it, but you're not supposed to freeze chocolate because then now you're breaking a whole nother roll. Right. So, and ganache is, I mean, it sounds fancy, but it's super easy. It's just heavy cream and chocolate together and I used a dark chocolate because um, the, the sponge itself is not very sweet mm. so um, now I've got to crinkle a little bit to get that's to, okay to get it back in a little bit of crinkling we understand it won't be so bad because it's because it comes off the paper next it does yeah it does. Let me do it this time. so um, that's what I've been working on in the kitchen while you tell your story and yell at my dog well, your dog is kind of being a little bit of a jerk. Because you get him all riled up. She literally walks in the door, <laughs> and she uses a squeaky high voice, and she's talking to him. <laughs> and then he gets up on a chair, and he's trying to talk to her face, and she's telling him, you need to calm down. You need to behave. And gets him all riled up, and she's like, are you ready to podcast? <laughs> and then she doesn't understand why the dog is going bananas. Bonkers. He's bonkers. He that is bonkers. And by the way, she used to accuse me of doing the same thing to her kid. And she did. <laughs> One year when when my son was young, we were at her house for Christmas. I think it was his first Christmas, actually. It was, because my it was also my son's first Christmas. Um, and They were teeny tiny, but your son was a little older. He was almost a year. Yeah. And... It's like after midnight, and I, I don't typically stay up really late. I know no, during those days. We're going to let it all hang. They, oh, they were, she and her husband would stay up late and do the whole thing that they do at Christmas. But I like to go to bed early because my son was an early riser. Yes, ridiculous. Yeah. So uh, I was all situated, and she comes downstairs. To sleep with y'all. To hang out. I don't know. <laughs> I was sleeping with y'all. Okay. I don't know why. I don't know why you were sleeping with us. I'll tell you because our parents were in my bed. Oh. My husband was sleeping in the single bed in the nursery. Right. And my daughter was sleeping in her own room. So gotcha. it was y'all or outside. Right. So you come downstairs. I'm trying to get my child to sleep. <laughs> and she grabs him and pl starts playing bouncy with him. <laughs> and there she got him jumping up and down on the sofa bed. Oh my god, it was he's so all riled fun. up, and then she's like, "Well, let me go to sleep." <laughs> I was like, "I'm ready to go to bed. Calm your kid down." Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Excuse me, ma'am. Pardon me, miss. I think you're gonna have to stay up. Oh I mean, it was like two o'clock in the morning. And guess what? The next day, bed. what were we doing? Out looking for anybody that was open. For Tylenol, we found some at a 7-Eleven and then ended up in the emergency room because your kid had an ear infection. He did. He had a terrible ear infection. He was yes. miserable. And miserable. I think that's because he didn't get enough sleep uh, the night You don't before. get an ear infection from not sleeping, you dodo bird. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you do. Yeah, that's that education you got going on. That's <laughs> that great fancy degree you got. <laughs> I did go to nursing school. Okay, well, they didn't teach you that. Well, that's why I'm not a nurse. Yeah, it's a good thing because yeah. you're trying to write your own rules. That's right. That is right.
All right, so what so, you got over there? Um, I have filled this sweet roll. Oh, it's so sweet. Yeah, and then I'm gonna roll it back up, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna refrigerate it for a bit, mm -hmm. and then I'll pour the ganache. So by the time I'm done with my gosh, gosh, ganache, um, it'll be ready for tasting, but not one minute before. Oh, rules. I yes, hate that. there have to be rules. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is um, put it on pause because I'm all out of top shoes. And we'll take a break until you get your crap done. And then you can tell us about your mud. I'll tell you about my mud. All right, well, I'm, I'm going to pause this. All right, we'll be right, right back. back. All right, we are back from our little breaky poo. Oh, my gosh, that was so much fun. It was fun. Yeah, we um, did a we did a line dance. A there was line dance. dancing. Yeah, we took yeah. a couple shots of bourbon. Oh, bourbon. We, we can't drink tequila. No. We, that's something you need to know right now about these two girls. Do not feed us tequila. Bad things happen to other people mm -hmm. when we drink tequila. Yeah, because tequila makes me mean as a snake. It does make her mean, but I might get a little flirty. Oh, good lord. I understand. That's why I'm just saying right now. I, and Shut my down. thing is we're owning it. I own it. We own, I own our, it. our liquor shenanigans. I think a nice, beautiful shot of bourbon <sighs> will do me right. Warms me to my toes. Absolutely. Love it. All right, I'm going to tell you a little story. Please do. Got a story. A little ditty. A little ditty. This happened in December of 2007. Okay. As a matter of fact, it was the fourth day of December in 2007. Okay. Um, this is the story of Deborah Gale Moody goes by the name of Gail. Uh, Gail talked to her mama on the morning of the 4th of December. Always important. And she promised to call her mom when she got home after work. Okay. She was one of those girls that calls her mama every day. Okay. So um, when her mom did not hear from her, she became concerned. She didn't hear from her that night. She didn't hear from her the next day, all day, and then she was like, wait a minute, something's wrong. How old is this Gail? Gail is 42. Okay. Just checking. 42. She's 42. Um, so Gail's mom asked her brother, Randy, to go out and check on Gail. Now, Gail lived in a um, trailer, mobile home, on a piece of Randy's property. He had a lot of acreage on a, in a rural area of Georgia. Okay. Um, it was not too far from Savannah. Um, and she really liked living out in the country. She liked, you know, doing a little gardening, farming, and mm -hmm. she enjoyed horseback riding. Gosh, this woman's living my life. I know. <laughs> so, um, Gail was 42. She was a single mom. She had a son who was in college in Florida. Her mom lived in Florida. Um, so Randy went out and checked, and, and he reported back that he thought something might be wrong because Gail's car was in the driveway, but she wasn't answering the door. Okay. So, um, it had been about five days at this point oh my gosh. since anyone had heard from her. So her family called the sheriff, and then her mom, her son, and her stepfather hopped in the car and started to drive up to Georgia from Florida to see if they could figure out what was going on. Once they got there, they found Gail's house was not in disarray. Her keys were on the kitchen table. I just want to say, if somebody came looking for me, <laughs> and they ever say to you, her house was not in disarray. I would say, oh my God, somebody has killed her. It's happening. <laughs> because uh, nobody will ever say that about That me. is very true. Yeah. Same here. Yeah. No. <laughs> they will be like, I couldn't tell if she was in there or not. <laughs> Everything was in order. It's like she had just disappeared into thin air. And it was completely out of character for Gail. She was the type that checked in with her friends, her mom, every day. Like sure. somebody always heard from her. And if she was ever going to go out of town, she would check in with her son and let him know where she was going. So it was completely okay. out of character. Hello, Trout. 
Gail um, worked for a construction company on the Fort Stewart military base. I think he just wants to, to be part of the podcast. He wants to read. He's trying, looking to read. He's trying to kiss you on the mouth. One day we will send you a picture of what Trout looks like when we when I do my part of the podcast. It's gorgeous. Because he has to be held. Up on her shoulder. On her shoulder. Um, and then he starts to go to sleep. But he likes to face front, not back. That's so right. He don't trust nobody. I don't know how it all works out. It just does. So anyway, she works on a, for a construction company on the Fort Stewart military base. So investigators go over, talk to her boss. Her boss said that on the 4th of December, um, he didn't notice anything out of the norm with her, but he did remember that she had given a co-worker a ride home. Um, and the co-worker was Gerald. And Gerald was a friend of Gail's. Gerald. So on the 5th of December, Gerald showed up to work, but Gail did not. Um, when investigators went to speak to Gerald, they found out that he had been fired. Gail's boss gave them Gerald's address, and investigators headed over to question him. Unfortunately, Gerald wasn't there. A woman at the house where he had been staying said that he had come by, picked up some items, and had left and not returned. Investigators asked Gerald's boss to set up a time for Gerald to come in and get his final paycheck so that they could intercept him and ask him some questions about Gail. The boss agreed, um, and then Gerald um, comes in, they start asking him questions. He confirms that Gail did give him a ride home that night, and he hadn't seen her since. And then he said that he'd been living with his brother, and he'd lost his cell phone, and that's why investigators hadn't been able to get in touch with him. Oh. Seemed a little sketchy, right? Yeah, because nobody loses their cell phone and just keeps on going. Quiet. Exactly. Well, turns out, he did. <laughs> Gerald gave him an alibi, and they go off to check it. But while they're checking, um, a, one of Gail's friends named Lynn called to say to tell investigators that she had seen Gail the night of the 4th, because after Gail dropped Gerald off, she'd gone to a store to buy a dog crate, and her friend Lynn had helped her get the crate out of the car into the house. Okay. So now Gerald's off the hook. Okay. People really do lose their cell phones and continue with life. I, I'm still, it's crazy. I'm going to hold on to the end to see if that comes back around. But remember, it was 2007. Oh. Right. Yeah. He had no idea what was going to do later. <laughs> so then um, they're back to, to square one. They go back and they talk to Gail's family to try and get some more leads. And then they find out that Gail was going through a bitter divorce. I know. So, uh, Gail and her husband had been, her husband's name was Jeff. Jeff, they had been married for two years, and he wanted a housewife. Oh. He wanted somebody to cook, clean, and take care of his young children. Well, he should have ordered that from a catalog. Right. Um, Gail had raised her son, and she was focused on her career. So, um, and then they also found out that Jeff was the beneficiary of, G of Gail's life insurance policy. So naturally, oh, investigators said, fun. hey, we need to talk to Jeff. Mm -hmm. We need to have a little chat to chat. Right. So Jeff comes in and they said, hey, where were you on the 4th of December? He says, oh, I was training with the National Guard. Wait, December? Yeah. Okay. It was it was December when she disappeared. Okay. They want to know where he where he was. All right, I got you. Where him where him was? Where you him was? Yes, where he out him? he was out with the National Guard, oh. doing some training exercises. I'll do that Can't tell you where it was, otherwise they'd have to dispose of you. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, um, and then there's this insurance policy, right? So uh, they go in, they call his the officer in charge. And find out that Jeff, in fact, was where he said he was. And okay. the life insurance policy was, like, less than $9,000. It was a little. It was Should real little. Should have kept that a little bit better, but let's yeah. just keep going. <laughs> so, now Jeff is off the hook. So, investigators start to turn up the heat on the search for Gail. They are canvassing neighborhoods, wooded areas. Her family puts up billboards across town. They pass out flyers. They do fundraisers. 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 
<laughs> that a fun raider is a thief. A thief, yeah, no. It's not a fun raider, but a racer. No. Again, this podcast is all about enunciation. Today it is. Brought to you by the letter enunciation. Unna- okay. Oh, well, that. Right. The thing. Right. And then Gail had a really, really good friend named Shelly Lupkin, and she helped with the fundraising and the billboards and she was canvassing areas and just a really good friend really in there helping everybody out so um nothing happened in 2008 another another woman in georgia meredith emerson disappeared um and police suspected this serial killer gary michael hilton Um, hilton targeted women hikers in georgia north carolina and florida So investigators um, were starting to kind of wonder, hey, what if this Hilton guy came out in this rural part of Mm -hmm. Georgia Mm -hmm. and did something to Gail? Unfortunately, they didn't have a body. They didn't know where Gail was, if she was dead or alive, and there was no connection. So Hilton was arrested and confessed um, to killing Meredith Emerson and women in Florida and North Carolina. So he was a serial killer in the area that got arrested, but he had nothing to do with girls. Okay. Right. Just a, that's a little twist. A little twist that's there. just a little twist. Yeah. So um, eight months after Gail disappeared, police get a call telling them that, that there's an inmate that has information about Gail's disappearance. So they went and um, the inmate tells them his cellmate had confessed to killing Gail. The cellmate's name was Marvin Jeffs. Oh. Marvin, if you lived in this town, which, by the way, is tiny, there's one stoplight, not big, mm-hmm. teeny tiny Georgia. Um, he's been in and out of jail for years. They figured out that he had um, done work for Gail. He worked as a plumber whenever she had some plumbing problems. For real plumbing problems. Not, I will come in and clean your pipes. No, 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 not yet. Not that kind of plumber. Right. So Marvin had been... Not like a schnatter type. All right. That's enough. (laughs) Just say it. I understand what you're saying, and what I'm telling you back is zip your mouth. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) Zip it up. Zip it. Anyway, um, Marvin had been bragging about killing Gail to his circle of friends, and he even told women that if they didn't hook up with him... Um, what happened to that missing woman was going to happen to them. Well, that's just... So investigators said, oh, no, you didn't. Oh, no. And they said, hey, Marvin, you need to come in to talk to us. Marvin said, okie doke, I'll be right over. Well, then guess what? He didn't show up. He didn't come. He, he wasn't a man of his word. He said, heck no, man, I ain't going in. Oh, my god. You're getting me, mister. I'm not going down for that. Mm. Right. So they just went to his place of employment. Oh. <laughs> yeah, there are not a lot of places uh, to Marvin. hide when you live in a really small <laughs> town. So they Marvin, said, you forgot to, that you went to work. <laughs> Come on in the car. i got some questions for yeah. you. So the investigator said, I could tell he was really nervous. His leg was bouncing up and down. He didn't make any kind of eye contact. And they said, we need to know what you know. You've been telling people around town you know something about Gail. And he says, well, I mean, I hardly knew her. I don't even really know who she is. Well, they're like, dude, you did work for her at her house. Right. He's like, yeah, but I don't really remember her. Yeah. That's so they decided to get a search warrant because it turns out that Marvin liked to record some of his interactions with women when they didn't know they were being recorded. Like when they're doing the dirty? Correct. So (gasps) investigators were thinking maybe we'll find some tape there with Gail on You know what's sad is that people around town knew this, and women (laughs) still did the dirty with Marvin. They did. Like, come on. They did. I know the town's small, but branch out a little bit. (laughs) And listen, when I was doing this research, I saw a picture of Marvin. Oh, no. He ain't all that. Not a looker, huh? Gee whiz. No, he Imagine ain't all that. that. Nope, nope, nope. So um, they go and get a search warrant, and they search his house. Nothing. They mm-hmm. find absolutely nothing that would tie him to Gail in any way. So um, after digging a little deeper, investigators figure out that Marvin was was making up stories 
because he wanted to get himself street cred. <laughs> I so that people would think he was street nookie. He was. They wanted to. He wanted people to think he was some sort of a tough guy. That's not the way to woo the ladies. Evidently, it worked. Well, <laughs> so unfortunately, at that point, the case goes cold. Hmm. And then, um, so this is 2007. Now we're going to jump ahead. 2010. Okay. Forty-two-year-old Lori Arrowwood disappeared from the same small town where Gail disappeared. Lori and Gail were really good friends, and they only lived a few miles apart. They had the same color hair and the same build. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. All right? So, um, Lori's family and friends, um, the, they, were, they were friends, and they find out that Lori and Gail have a common friend. And her name is Shelly Lumpkin, right? Oh, yeah. The yeah. one that helped with the fundraiser. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, investigators said, hey, you got a common friend here. Let's get her over here and ask her some questions. Maybe she can help us figure out what the heck's going on. So, Shelly and her husband, Kenneth, who was a, worked as a corrections officer, drive over to Lori's house and start talking to investigators. Um, they, they notice that Kenneth is like really nervous. So, you know, what happens when you're really nervous around investigators, I pee my pants a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> they come after you. They're like, That's Hey, that. they like start to come at you. And then I'm like, I tinkle. I tinkle. <laughs> Please leave me alone. Don't get me. I'm, I didn't do anything. I had, a, I had a problem. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, it turns out that Kenneth worked as a handyman. It's a side job to make some extra money because he wasn't making enough as a corrections officer. Okay. And he had seen Lori the day she went missing. Investigators um, haul Kenneth down to the police station and they do a formal interview. Okay? okay. And Kenneth tells them that um, after he finished repairs at Lori's, they got into his truck and... They went for a drive, you know, because that's what friends do. You just go for a drive. Now, Lori was married. Her husband was stationed overseas in the military. She had Thank two you teenage for your service. She had two teenage daughters. Okay. They went to school. When they came home, they said something's not right. Mama's car is here. Her keys are here. Her purse is here. That sounds familiar. No, Mama. Right. So um, Kenneth is like, yeah, yeah, I did some work and. Uh, we went for a drive, but then we got into an argument. Uh oh. And I pulled her right out of my truck. Oh. And I left her in some field. Well, that is very rude, Kenneth. And, and then he said, God, I hope I didn't hurt her. <gasps> Kenneth! Right. And he said he just left her. That's so rude. Right. Well, Lori, he says, threatened to tell his wife that he had raped her. So. He, uh, That's what the argument was? That was the argument. Yes. So. So it turns out handyman is more like a handsy man. Yeah. 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 So, um, they're like, can you take us to where you left, you her. left her so you that we can well. see if we can maybe find her? Oh, God. And, um, he says, sure. So, on the way out there, the investigators keep asking him questions, asking him questions, and then he says, I did it. It was me. Oh, gosh. He said that they had, in fact, gotten into a fight, that Lori had accused him of rape and was threatening to tell his wife. And, <clears throat> excuse me, he got so mad that he pulled her out of the truck and he choked her. And then he threw her body in a field. And went home. What a jackass. So investigators um, find Lori's body and arrest Kenneth. And they say to him, hey. By the way, <laughs> something else happened. Something else here has happened and we don't have an answer for what happened. And this is now 2013 by the time he finally goes to trial. Oh and he's sentenced to life in prison. For Lori's for Lori. murder. Okay. Right. And they say to him, did 
do you know what happened to Gail? Like, where were you the day Gail went missing? Sure. And he said, well, I was at home sick. Investigators said, okay, that's kind of weird because it was several days after she went missing that they reported her missing. So nobody knew for sure what day she went missing. Oh, they're so smart, yeah. those cops. <laughs> they are. They're really those smart. Those investigators, they know how to work they know. a person. They know that's what they're why doing. I get nervous around them. Yeah, that's people wet their pants that's when investigators why. ask them that's questions. Why. I got nothing for I'm you. I'm a nervous tinkler. <laughs> so um, he says he didn't have anything to do with Gail's. Whatever happened to Gail wasn't him. It wasn't me. Didn't do it. So he pleads guilty and um, is sentenced to life in prison. That's August of 2013. Okay. So Gail's family and friends were absolutely positive that Kenneth knew more than what he was saying. Now we're going to jump, and now it's 11 and a half years. 11 and a half years since Gail went missing. Her killer can has finally confessed. The, can you do the math for me, please? What year is it? So She went missing in 2007? Correct. 11 years is 2018 and a half. Yes. So it's pretty, half, pretty yes, recent. Yes. Oh, my God. Look at me. I know. Public math. I know. Well, look at that. Winner. So um, investigators have decided they need to wrap up this cold case, and they believe yeah. they know who the killer is. So they go into that jail where Kenneth is rotting, and they ask that jackass, one more time, can you tell us what happened to Gail? And he says, no. And they say, what if we sweeten the deal a little bit for you? What if we were to give you immunity in anything that happened to Gail? Would you have information then? And then he thought about it and he said, I might be able to tell you something. Okay, but he's already in. He's already got a life sentence. Right. So it couldn't have gotten any worse, right? It, they didn't have. Well, I don't know. I think they do have the death penalty in Georgia. Oh, but I because so. he had confessed, then he wasn't going to get. The he death wasn't going to get it, so it couldn't get any worse for him, right? Even yeah. If they, like, let me sweeten the deal. Right. You're still going to rot in prison. Right. <laughs> so he. Got, okay, I'll talk. So he said, "Yeah, I mean, I'll take the immunity and I'll tell you what happened." The day that Gail disappeared, he went over to her house. Now, remember, they were friends. Yes. Um, and he pretended that he needed some ideas for his wife's Christmas present, Shelly. Okay, because it was December. It was December. He needed some ideas early. I mean, it was, I don't do my shopping normally at the beginning of December, but some people do, I suppose. Some people shop in October. Oh, my God. That's crazy talk. I don't shop till Christmas Eve. <laughs> Sometimes and sometimes Christmas. I wait till after Christmas. To Depending get the on sale. when you're going to see them. That's right. <laughs> so anyway, um, he goes over. He's like, "Yeah, I need to see. Help me think of what I should get Shelly for Christmas." And oh, let's have sex. Ew. And she, right, she was like, mm -mm, "No." So oh, wow. he goes to sexually assault her. Oh, so that whole argument about rape might not have been, you know, from Lori. Was that her name? Yes. Yeah, she might have been telling something true. Yes. So, um, he goes to sexually assault her, but him's Willie isn't working. Oh, my God, that's just, that's <laughs> deserving. So, he beats the crap out of her, <gasps> throws her in his trunk, and drives over to his parents' house, because where else are you going to go? Well, I mean, you gotta go have, you gotta see your parents. You gotta go. They you gotta were out, see mama. They were out of town. Oh. So he pulls her out of the trunk, takes her inside, and goes to rape her again. Wait. He did. And she wasn't all the way dead? No, she wasn't dead yet. Okay. Yeah. So, um, guess what? What? He still couldn't get it up. He's in his mother's house. Right. Couldn't God, get it up. Save us. Trying to rape her a second in your time. mother's house when you're an adult? Yeah, because he doesn't. He doesn't have a functional willy whacker. It doesn't work. It does not work. Well, he should have known that going into the He should have. He should have. <sighs> so instead, he's well, I'm just her. saying, poor Shelly. She got a man with a broken willy. Well, yeah. Uh, but there are again, a lot of reasons that they're going to say poor Shelly. But yeah, the broken willy might be one of them. But then again, 
I'm just saying maybe she was thankful that that Willie wasn't working. Maybe. Uh, maybe. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, he strangles her. And oh then he throws her body out in the same area where Lori's body was dumped. Um, but because it had been so long, they were never, never able to recover yeah. anything. I mean, it had been 11 and a half years. But investigators said the whole point was they wanted to give the family closure. closure. Absolutely. Families need closure. Yeah, because they didn't know. Did she just up and leave? Right. Did, was she kidnapped and taken out of the country? Right. And even you if know? you think, yeah, something bad has happened, you, you there's always there still going to be a question in the back of your Absolutely. mind. Absolutely. Just maybe. Until you know for sure. Right. There's got to be that glimmer of hope. And and you have to long for the, the appearance of that family member. Just, you know, yeah. even after 15, 20 years, you were still hopeful. Maybe I'll just see her on the street. Maybe right. something happened and she lost her memory and, you know, whatever. Sure. But, yeah, you still are longing for that person. Right. Well, they got what they needed. They That's were finally right. able to get closure on what happened. And thankfully, the asshole that can't get his penis to rise, even when he's trying to rape somebody... Well, it's going to rot and deal for the rest of his life, and I'm hoping that somebody will take it. man has tried to work on that Willie a little bit and see if they couldn't get it to work Maybe that's him. what he needed. Maybe that's he right. was going after the wrong sex. Maybe he's just an asshole who doesn't deserve sexual pleasure. No. No. No, no, no. He doesn't deserve any pleasure. And God only knows. I bet more stuff ended up coming out about him sure. as a corrections sure. officer. And not only that, but Shelly was probably just mortified. And I, I believe... That had they not caught him, that he, he would have been continued. a serial killer. Yeah, he would have continued. He yeah. was one away. Yep, one, one away. away. Yeah. So, God rest her soul. Yeah, and do you think he's still living in prison? Oh, yeah. I well, would love, I would love to go and just be able to sit across, like sit, I mean, of course, I need glass between us because I'm a complete scary cat. Sure. But, and then, like, tease him, like, you're Willy, don't worry. Yeah, how's your Willy, Wonka? We all Wonka? know that you Willy Wonka done <laughs> left ya. That's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And throw, like, molded bologna at the glass. <laughs> like. Oh, he would definitely. <laughs> I don't know what the molded well, bologna is. Well, hold up pictures of naked women that he can't have hey, sex with. look, you can't have sex with her. Or she her. She'll never have sex with you. <laughs> and you can't even get... Self pleasure because you're Willy Wonka don't work. Right or fear. There's one. She even said she'd have sex with you, but you can't because <laughs> you can't. <laughs> ha ha. So anyway, Ugh. there just has to be mental torture for these people, and I'm happy to provide. Agreed. Yeah, as long as there are plenty of guards and there's glass between us. Not to worry. Scared. We are adding this this prison in Georgia to, to the prison tour. Our prison tour. I cannot wait. <laughs> I get... mean, Johnny Cash did it. Why can't we? Exactly. Yeah. He doesn't get the corner market on that. That's right. Thank you, Johnny right. Cash. God well, bless you. God rest both of those girls' little souls because yes. they died at the hands of some man that they thought was their friend and who was the husband of their friend. Yes. That's not okay. Don't trust your friend's husbands. Um, I'm just saying. <laughs> well, I mean, that's probably taking it a little too far. I, mean, I don't know. I don't want my friends to not trust my husband. Well, maybe don't have them... Uh, like, maybe don't have your friend's husband over in any capacity when your friend isn't with them. Now, I will agree with that. That is a good rule of thumb. That is a good rule of thumb. There's no and reason. And if you are a friend and your friend's husband says, I need ideas for my wife's Christmas present, work it out over the phone. Yeah. No need to work that yeah, out yeah. in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Or I could, I could meet you no, at No, I'm not going to meet you because I'm going to Google some shit and send you pictures. Y'all, <laughs> you can just figure that out. There you go. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, let me send some stuff to you. Yeah. All right. All right, well, so I'm I, ready to eat this Swiss roll. I have made a Swiss roll. It and so holy yummy. crap, I can't believe it. It has turned out beautifully it's gorgeous it's it's all shiny it's stuffed it's and rolled and it's, glazed i can't get over it you are on your way Shelby, to oh. great american bacon off oh my gosh mm -hmm. i wonder how i would do in the tent well you would do fine except i don't know that they have the proper ventilation that we yeah, appreciate to have the snow blower <laughs> on me yeah they yeah. I, sometimes it gets hot and muggy in that tent, and I, no. I'd just be like, guys, I'm not baking today. No, I can't. Who's going to bake in that kind of weather? Well, they are. Not me. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. they only win a plaque anyway. It's not like they win money. <laughs> they, yeah, they just win some. I'll just get my own plate. I'll get my own plate. Cake plate. Yeah. That's right. Exactly. All right, so let's taste it. Are you ready? I am so ready. Hold on a minute. Let's get this, and we'll put this 
slice between us, oh. and then we can he reach out. I got it. All right, ready? Let's take. Mm. Oh my lord. Sugar, that is so good. I really love the way that just a little hint of salt comes right. with that cream. Yeah. Because it just gives it just a little pop. And then I use the dark chocolate. Yeah, for the ganache. Yeah, I think it's a really good contrast. And it just all flows together. But it's not overly sweet. It's not sickingly sweet. Oh, my God. It's, it's so freaking good. sickeningly sweet. Yeah. It's a so, Swiss cake roll. It is a Swiss cake roll. It's a little Annie. Tally ho, motherfuckers. <laughs> I don't know why that has anything to do with the Swiss cake roll. It does I don't know how to talk Swiss. Maybe we're just going to wrap it up. All right. Well, we will see y'all again soon. Thank you for listening. And be sweet, y'all. Have a great week. Bye. Bye.